Hey, buzzers, you know what time it is. We got a breakdown, Arrow. It is season seven, episode number two. We're talking about the longbow hunters and, of course, a lot of other juicy stuff going on. Oliver's still in jail. And you know what? Dinah's on Melastner, but we're going to get into it right now. You're tuned in to After Buzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz <laughs> I'm just going to throw in this really <laughs> intense music, and I'm going to mime, because we don't have music. Or it's the beginning. Oh, there it goes. There, there it, it is. is. There, there it is. is. You just got an uh, interpretive the, dance yeah. show. We went with the OG. OG arrow. I missed the interpreted dance note. I had nothing to okay. prepare. <laughs> interpretive dance, guys. Okay, welcome. Welcome to the show. Hey, how are you? I'm sorry if you had to put up with that. If you're listening on the podcast, you miss all this deliciousness, yeah. but that's okay. You can watch on YouTube later. Anyway, hi, welcome to the Arrow After Show. As you know, I'm your host, Ali Kona Bradford, and I'm joined by some amazing ladies. Say hello. Hi, everybody. I'm Olivia DiBortoli, and I'm so excited. This was a good episode. Very much. Hey guys, I'm Carolina Benetti, and I'm so excited to hate somebody besides Black Canary. <laughs> Woo And sitting next to me is my imaginary ginger friend. This Aww. is Matt Marr, who couldn't be with us tonight, but he is here in spirit. We feel it. So we have to start off with my favorite segment, hashtag who I love to hate. But first, just know if this is your first time tuning in that we always dedicate this side of the table just to you because you are our special guest and our special host so join us in the chat give us your thoughts your opinions and join other fans in the conversation so i see you mocking me i know over there. i wasn't mocking it was a, it was a joining oh okay in the conversation I she was it. like really feeling mm -hmm. your groove yeah. so Thank she you. like slipped into it I she was, was like, like mm -hmm. oh, okay i can take that <laughs> i'll take it i'll take it <laughs> So starting with hashtag who I love to hate, this week I am going to take Dinah because she, as ow, you, ow! I know, as you heard in the <laughs> intro, ticked me off. Oh my God. She's like super stubborn and has blinders on and anything that has to do with Vinny, she's just stupid about it. Sorry. He was the love of her life. I'm just going to say. I know. And, but And she's protecting the woman who killed him. So you can't you can't hate her that much. She's she's still human. She's protect she's she's doing a lot. She's doing a lot. Anytime <laughs> somebody wants to hate Dinah, I'm on board. <laughs> I'm saying this is just hashtag who I love to hate, not who I'm gonna defend. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, no, it's cool. It's cool. We're gonna talk more about that later, but I'm gonna pass the baton to you. So congratulations on your feelings this week. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I hope you. other people join you. But my I love to hate this week is actually going to be Diaz. Really? And why is this? Yes, because he's awful. And I felt for Felicity when she didn't want to separate the train tracks. As she shouldn't. Yeah. As she shouldn't. Okay. It, ugh, it, ugh. But nobody was there to even take down Diaz. Because let's be honest, if anybody was going to take down Diaz, it would be Oliver. And he hasn't been right. able to do yeah. it yet. Right. And Black Nito, I don't care that you've joined Argus and gone on like your little power pitch now. He wasn't going to win. I wasn't even really buying the whole trash can fight. But it, I'll get to that. But yeah, Diaz. Just I, he's just out there still. He's like a bad stink. You know, like when you just can't get yeah. rid of it. Or you're stuck in an elevator and somebody farts and you can't get out. That's oh, Diaz. It's the Diaz worst. Is a fart hashtag. Okay, He's the worst. A, Diaz, <laughs> Diaz is such a fart. I'm such on board with that. I can I can love to hate him. Before I do mine, I um, am in the chat with you guys. I'm always in the chat with you guys. So shout out, say hi to um, just a few people that are in the chat with me. Hi Ivan. Um, hi Colin Prime. Always in the chat. So a few people uh, gave me their who I love to hate. Winter's Beauty said um, the same one that I did, so I'll end up with that one. Uh, Billy Jean Girl said Felicity, and Seb also <gasps> said Felicity. What? Which it kind oh, of their oh. I love to hate. Yeah, it kind of breaks my heart. Yeah. I'm mad at you. Shame on you. You can't okay. think about what you said. They are entitled hey. to their opinions as well. Yeah, yeah but it's wrong. It's like being on the wrong side of history. <laughs> Winter's Beauty, I am on board with you. You love to hate the guard, and I am on board with that. Like, that guard should have listened to Oliver when he was giving him the advice to just get out of the prison, and he wasn't. And he was being stubborn, and he was he was being jaded he, just because he had been there for 12 years. He was being mean. I didn't like him. Well, as much as I agree with you, just because... <laughs> You had to defend my who I love to hate. <laughs> Go for it. I'm just going to have to say, um, talking about the guard, 
Dang it, I lost my thought. I was like so busy, like who I love to hate, and giving you like the wiggly neck and everything. I got a wiggle neck and you can't even fit. I know. You it's did. Right. Um, darn it. Yeah. What did you dislike about the guard? That's where we were going. I think she was defending him. I was actually going to defend him. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Because I do hate him. Yeah. At the same time, how many people have probably tried to give you a load of poop and just been like, hey, so and so is trying to do this to you. So and so is trying to do. And he's in a That's position true. where you can't trust anybody. You're not going to trust a criminal. And he's already formed his own opinion about who the green arrow is and he doesn't like him. Yeah. So why would the green arrow tell him the truth? Just like all these other criminals are not going to tell me but the truth. But sometimes you can feel people. You can feel their energy, and you can feel... Am I being too happy right now? I think that now? guy does not feel a lot of feelings. I think he, so, too. Yeah. Well, he needs to, he needs got to like get in touch with his feelings. Is aggro my man, really solid. All right, all and right. Maybe like a love of takeout well, pizza. Well, he, ne- he should have listened to Oliver, and he didn't. Right. But so I, do, I, I do hate him, too. He was Thank one you. of my, my first thing on my paper. Thank says, you. I hate the guard. You, oh, because he's like, you're not a hero. You're a nothing. Okay, dude, you're not getting paid yeah. to slam somebody. You're just getting paid to be a guard. So all the extra opinions are not necessary. Oh, see, but I thought that he really disliked Oliver because he was like, I grew up with people like you. I went to school with yeah. people oh, like you. See? You overprivileged little. And I was like, ooh. Bitter. Ooh, he's got a one percent hate in him. Yeah. That's what that is. Bitter party of one. He's got. It's not like anybody's ever born and they're like, I hope to be born into the one percent. I wouldn't be mad if somebody wants to adopt me from the one percent. I'm available. Um, I've been so. But, oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, but I was just saying. Like, but I think that his distaste of rich people is what stems his distaste for the Green Arrow because it's possible he th- he loved the Green Arrow until he realized the Green Arrow was rich and then he felt bamboozled. Could be. Ooh. We're getting Ooh, really into da, this. Da, 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 da. Wouldn't it be cool if they used to go to high school together? Ooh. Like maybe he was a senior when Oliver was a freshman. Did Oliver yeah, go to private school? It doesn't matter. Okay. I'm, don't ruin my theory. I'm just saying I'm that sorry. it would be no, fun. They went to school together. If they went to high school together and it's like did not go old. to school together. I mean, I don't think they went that deep into it, TBH, but... Um, Ivan Soto <laughs> made a good point. He said, York kind of made a good point. Team Arrow has made the law a joke. And at the end of the day, as much as we love them... It was. It's kind of true. How is it a joke? I mean, they they the law law enforcement and Team Arrow were so against each other, and it was like they were fighting each other instead of fighting the law. But imagine, at the end of the day, but the law was corrupt, and half of true. them were bought out by true. ideas. Not anymore, though. Not anymore. But they're basing everything on the past. Like this, yeah. Guard is talking about the past, so. Whatever. I want to talk about the fact that we're going to continue with the jail situation, yes. prison, but the little man. Come on, little, little man. man. Stuart Little is a liar. Well, you he's know. He's a lying liar. I was going to say, he's such a groupie. Like, he's, he's a little bit too much. He's such a groupie. Much. I Come agree. on. I'm screaming. When Oliver got out of his solitary confinement and he just pops off with, oh, he didn't know anything. He was just middleman for Diaz. How do you know that? Yeah. I ask people, when you're friends with the Green Arrow, people tell you, people don't tell you anything, Stuart Little. You're a liar. You're a lying, lying liar. And you're working for wow. Diaz. Wait, hold on. The cherry on top was like, people are afraid of me now. Yeah, no, no they're not. No, Nobody's so. scared of you. And he's like, because we're a team. It's like, since when are you a team? Like, you guys are not a team. You're just like tagging. You're like a little leech. You're like tagging on to like the green arrow and the thought of who he is and stuff. And it's like, it's weird and I don't like it and I don't trust him either. Hmm. What, what about I you guys? I agree with your instincts. Um, DeAndre Harris says, Stanley encouraged Oliver to threaten the guard's family. Stanley, Winter's Beauty says, Stanley is a plant and is I'm standing Stuart by Little's it. Is that Stuart Little's name? I know. Stanley, yes. I just think of him as Stuart Little. <laughs> His name is Stanley, yes. I just call him Little Man. <laughs> but either way, um, so we're really quick. Um... W W G A D. That's so good. Really? Really? <laughs> what would Green Arrow do? Like, how has he not kicked him off to the I side know. at that point? But at the same time, Oliver did actually go, hmm, I, what would Green Arrow do? <gasps> Overwatch. Because he trusts him. I'm so confused as to why he trusts him so much. And then because he was he's like, an idiot without felicity, clearly. Um, and then he was like, oh, what? Uh, we, I would ask Overwatch. And he was like, what's an Overwatch? I was like, oh, that's cute. Okay, question, you guys. I... Question at home to you guys who watched, because, you know, I'm taking notes and I'm looking up and doing one of these, right? So when Oliver finally decides to make his move so he can go hack the computer and he slingshots and knocks the light out or yes. what have you, did he use a condom? Oh, 
Was that what that was? I thought he had a condom with something and it. it was rubber and he let it go and it was like pew. And like, oh, I didn't even I think didn't even about notice that. that. It could have been a rubber. I thought it was a rubber glove. Oh, <laughs> I just thought it was a rubber. I, think a rubber, I feel like a rubber glove because the cop, the the like uh, the wardens in there wear the rubber gloves. That would yeah. make more sense. I mean, Ali Kona. I just saw the dome shape. <laughs> Let's Ali Kona. Come on. Uh, in the chat, whoever saw it, let's uh, hear what you guys have to think of what it is. If it's a, it's a legit, glove or if it's a I'm condom. just giving you a hard time. Oh, no, no, no. I was saying, but it's a legit question. Because yeah. if it is, that's like a really edgy thing to put in a CW <laughs> yeah. show. Or just like they cursed in, on the show tonight. And you noticed it. Yeah. yeah. He but, said son of a bee. And I was like, dang, I didn't know they Winter's could say Beauty that says, I wasn't sure what it was, but I, now I want it to be a condom. <laughs> <laughs> See? See? <laughs> I mean, maybe. Could I mean, well he shanked been. himself, so it could have been a condom. That was that was very Oliver, too. Dude, yeah. that was the most heavy metal moment on the show I've <laughs> ever seen. He was like, ah, I'm going to eat a bat after this, too. I was like... <laughs> That was so smart. Yeah. Him, yeah. him and the guard, man. That guard did not see that coming. No. No. But I like it. It was well played because mm-hmm. part of me is like, okay, Oliver is quote unquote a killer. Like that was his whole internal debate seasons ago, right? right? And so this time around, I'm like, is he really going to kill a dude just to be in? I'm like, that just doesn't seem like him. And so when he was trying so hard all these different ways to get the guard to leave, I'm like, well, pressure point pressure point then i thought okay maybe he's gonna like put him in a choke out and just make him pass out and make people think he died yeah so yeah when he shanked himself i was like whoa i thought he was gonna use the guard's family against him so that the guard left the like the prison of his own volition yeah he's gonna eat a bat next episode no i thought that was awesome because i was like there's no way that he's about to kill some dude right now there's no way but i was like how is he gonna get around it and he shanked himself i was like that was smart. Wait, that I was have really a smart. Beth, like, did you go to a Metallica concert before you wrote this episode? Or who wrote this week's episode? I, I didn't I don't know. see. I I'm going to look it up and I'm going to, like, stalk them on Twitter and be like, guys, Metallica? <laughs> Question mark. Like, what? <laughs> right. What happened? Yeah, Tell right. us. Was it like a metal festival? God yeah. Damn it. it was awesome. All right. Anyway. But you got to think also, too, that Oliver's endured so much pain in his life when he was back yeah. on the island, all those scars and stuff. So at mm-hmm. this point, like, it's like a toothpick. I know. He doesn't care anymore. He could just like stab himself in the eye and be like, next. All Come right. on. Well, cool. he needs his eye. He is an archer. Hmm? Well, he uh, might not. He might not go that extreme. Yeah. He, he needs that. All right. Okay. Well, you know, examples. Either way. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about the whole approach to, so we have the big conflict of this show, which is this little battery, which is like a supercharged, huge weapon. And there's the... What's a re- uh, it's a eternally renewable battery, which sounded pretty cool. Not just okay. a little battery. It was, oh, sorry. Like, it was powerful. Okay. I'll give okay. it its title. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay, so there's the felicity aspect of it yeah. where Diaz is attached to this. Let's get Diaz, worry about the battery yeah. later. Yeah. But then you've got Diggle, who's just a big fat liar and is like, it's just a battery, even though it's a weapon, I'm not going to tell you. And I'm going to fight you on it. And I want to do it the Argus way. Was yeah. anybody else here at this table truly disappointed in Diggle, or do you agree? Oh, so disappointed. So, I, yeah. Oh, so oh, disappointing. Go for it. No, you go for it. No, oh, I was so mad. Because, you know, I'm also a, a little weirded out by the Felicity thing that she couldn't, like, focus on, on on anything but Diaz. But we're not there yet. Diggle was frustrating. Like, come on. You you even said, you're like, you know, I was part of the team and, like, you, don't let this distract you from how I was on the team or whatever. And it's like, man, you're, you're like full Argus now. Right. It's like 0% Diggle, you're full Argus, and I don't like it. Yeah. What were you going to say? So mine's his little, like, preacher moment that really ticked me off. Sing it, sister. <laughs> oh, my goodness. When he got on his little soapbox, like, pop, 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 like Kevin Hart with his little cookie operation, he got up there and he was like, you know, Felicity, the reason I didn't take the green arrow mantle oh, is because, and, and then it set my skin on fire because yeah. he was like, I saw what it did to you and your family. I saw, and I was like, excuse me, excuse me. Excuse me, like you weren't running around the city like you were Black Nito, mm. if you don't know, when he ran around with that Black Magneto looking hel- helmet, I dubbed it Black Nito and that's mm. stuck, so hashtag Black Nito. You ran around 
Mr. Black Nito saving the day, doing all that stuff. And can we remind you of what happened to your own brother, yeah. Diggle? And you're going to talk to Felicity on your little pop, pop, pop soapbox about the green arrow mantle being dark? Uh-uh. Boy. Uh-uh. 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 Hold, please. It's just like a... <laughs> skirt. How about skirt. when he had the green arrow outfit on and did not want to take yeah. it off? Yeah. When Oliver came back, it was like playing tug of war, like tug of war, tug of war, excuse me. Yeah. Like two children where he was like, okay, I don't want to let go. I don't want to let go. What are you talking about? Yeah. I'm like, who, like, you just became a little BITC, you know the rest. Yeah. You they said want, it on the show. You wanted it and then you, and you did not want to take it off and Oliver was going to take it back from you and... Uh, whatever. Uh, people in the chat yes. actually disagree. Uh, wow. Winter's Beauty says she liked that talk. And Zay Talk says Diggle's right. He has a job now to do. Why don't y'all understand that? He had a job before. And, and he Black was still Magic, running around. Black Magic says Dig was right, too. I, I don't know, you guys. I feel betrayed by you. I mean, look, you're entitled to your own opinion. I just disagree. Um, <laughs> sorry. I mean, I am on board I, that I, he did have a job to do. I, well, yeah, and I get it. But it's like... I think Felicity had a great point when she said Oliver made a specific sacrifice and it's like, it just went to hell. Like, yeah. he may as well just ran around and been a vigilante. Like, he's escaped stuff before. Yeah. He may as well be low-key. I can find a new mask, a new eyeshadow, and be a different hero and still do the same thing. Yeah. But I am choosing to turn myself in and I'm turning it over to you. And now you're doing the whole Argus thing, which before they were butting, their team and Argus were butting heads mm-hmm. before. So I just don't understand why he's so by the book, which is the same thing with Laurel, I mean not Laurel, uh, Dinah. Yeah. Not to like hop topics, but that's why she was my hashtag who I love to hate because she was so black and white. And I get that you have a job, but this is just such a weird area of gray that sometimes, sometimes you need to take a look at that and be like, okay, I know your purpose is a bigger purpose than what we're capable of. It's like when Dinah kept on saying, let the police force protect you, let them protect you. I'm sorry, what did they do last N- season? Nothing. Sh- mm hmm. Nothing. They shiznit. Did, they did they shiznit. Shiz- so why would I trust you? And why are you so by the book? Like, are you blind? Yeah. I was thinking the same thing about... Uh, go ahead. I know. Everyone is Everyone is so by the book. I, the, that wasn't by the book. And it's just like, why are you jumping ships so hard this season? Like, you're so, these two are jumping ships so hard. But I mean, like... Maybe I, because everything went so wrong last season when they weren't by the book that they're trying to overcompensate for it. Mm-hmm. And then that's also going to backfire, and hopefully the season brings us into a good middle. But so far, it's good conflict. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Um, I want to have... burn Diggle's little soapbox down to the ground. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> just, is there anything that you wanted to share with us real quick before we move on? Yes. If you enjoy arguing with us as much as we enjoy <laughs> arguing with you, I want to let you know. We all here at After Buzz would like to let you know that our network produces after shows for nearly all your favorite TV shows. From dramas, reality TV, sci-fi, and more, there's no network that works harder to serve television fans. But we need your help. We're asking that you please subscribe to one or more of our YouTube channels. By subscribing to our channel, YouTube will suggest content that's tailor-made for you, and you'll help After Buzz continue to grow. And if you're worried about pesky notifications, don't be, because they're optional. So hit the subscribe button for this channel and check out our After Buzz YouTube channels as well. Let us know you did so in the comments and we'll thank you on air. For now, thanks for being the best fans and for helping us be the ESPN of TV talk. Yeah. Yay. It's because of you guys that we do this, so thank you for doing it. No, but really, say hi, say what's up, let us know as you subscribe, and we will give you a shout out. (laughs) <laughs> team chat Watch versus team pan- panel this week. Lines have been drawn. Wow. Oh, no. wow. So this is serious. We got, well, let's talk about Felicity's <laughs> point of view. Since we just talked about Diggles and some of us heavily disagreed, mm-hmm. some of us did not. <laughs> but Felicity's at a point where she tried playing by the rules and that ish did not work. Right. Clearly, this dude didn't just show up in her life, he showed up in her home. Mm-hmm. And she's now the protector of a child at the same time, too. So I understand where she's like, just nip that in the butt. Like, let's get rid of him. Forget the battery. I get it. It's a big deal. But if you nip him in the butt, this all goes away. Yeah. Um, so as you all know, I am like the biggest Felicity lover. She is my love. But I was not a fan. I was not on board with her this episode. I really? get. I'm. I agree with you that she has all of these things to protect now, like her family. But mm-hmm. there's a bigger picture, you know. And and you almost messed up. I know that where we weren't on the Argus team, but you were working on a mission with Argus, and you almost blew it because you were so focused on just 
um, getting Diaz. Right. So. But to be fair, I thought that that was a good job of the show showing her having PTSD for yeah. what has happened to her. Because like you said, Diaz didn't just take her life from her. He also threatened her in her own home after she had been incognito and was ready to kill a child. That yeah. she's responsible yeah. for and right. loves now. Right. And he took he took Quentin. He took her husband away. Like, all these things, so I, I get it, too. I thought it was good. It was a good show of PTSD, so I understood why she had the hesitation. But, you know, hindsight is all... What's the saying? Hindsight's, hindsight's always twenty twenty. Yeah, hindsight's always twenty twenty. is, like, the fact that, yeah, she couldn't pull that trigger at the end, but, honey, Black Needle wasn't going to stop him. So I'm really thrilled that she's teamed up with Watson. I'm yeah. salivating you for know, this team up. I didn't think, I know you guys said you knew or had a feeling it was her. I didn't. Part of oh, me was Watson like, Watson for sure. Oh, I was like, part of me was like, who's it? Who's it? It brings then, everything full circle though, because before Watson was just like a bad stink. You know what I mean? She messed everything up. She made people take these plea deals. She separated all our favorite people from one another. And Diaz is still out there scot free. So this brings it full circle and gives Watson the accountability that was missing. See, and for me, last season, part of me felt like Watson was part of the bad team. Just because she was trying so hard, mm. she wanted Oliver so bad, and she wanted this so bad. And I was like, what's your MO? Like, you're really, really pushing this whole initiative to get rid of vigilantes, even though they're the ones that are trying to fight the bad people. So I always thought, low-key, like, she had motive with Diaz or somebody yeah. else that wasn't proper. So when Felicity said she was going to work with somebody else, I know it might sound weird, and you guys in the chat are probably going to be like, eh? But I was like, is she just, like, her and Renee going to go off and do their own thing? Because Renee is always so gung-ho about, like, so let's gung-ho. do it. Well, but I, he's also worthless. Like, what? no offense to Wild what? Dog, but, like, he's not good at computers like she is. He can't help her in that aspect. And he can't put the mask on without risking but jeopardizing yeah, everybody's clearance. But I feel like he doesn't care. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, he put the mask on before, and he was willing to risk it before. And this time around, he was willing to find a way in his own way to justify him accompanying her to the Longbow uh, headquarters. But Felicity is a mental fighter. So her way of bringing Diaz down, the physicality is going to be like the very end of the plan. She, I think she's going to destroy all of his connections. Which is mm. smart. I think yeah, she's I, smart. Though. But I just felt like because she has the brains, she doesn't have somebody that's a fighter that's the brawn that yeah. could protect her in the event that, let's say, she is doing her whiz stuff and somebody comes and breaks in on her. She can't defend herself. So she ne- I she's don't gonna think have she's have... thought that far ahead, though, because all she knows in her head now is she's not responsible for William because he's at boarding school. So it gives her the freedom to be reckless and like to truly unleash yeah. her like espionaginess. But who says that no one can break into his boarding school? Yeah. Like, I thought that was the weirdest decision ever because now no one can watch and over him. And now no one has a, a, a hold on him. Nobody knows where he is, really. Someone could take him and, and nobody would have any idea about it. So my thought I on... I mean, there are plot holes. Yeah. What's your thought? Uh, my thought on who she was going to talk about talk to um, initially was... Because we hadn't seen him the entire episode was the other Green Arrow. Mm. We haven't seen him at all this episode. So that was... Uh, um, a possibility, or someone in the chat said it was. It could have been that Russian dude. Um, Bennett, uh, he died, uh, didn't he? No, um, Bennett, uh, Bennett Anatoly. 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 Yes. Um, it could have been him. But then when she sat down in the office that looked like you know the FBI office, I was like, oh, for sure it's Watson. But I don't know. I think it's a good idea because Watson has such a big team behind her. I think I th- I think it'll be a good team up because you know Felicity can be the brawn and then the team can be. You mean the brain? The brain, the brain and yeah, then the like, team oh. could be the brawn. But Watson yeah. also has all the resources exactly. that she needs because what Felicity really needs is unlimited resources to yeah. get the job done. And Watson's uh, team doesn't have the the manpower intelligence to get it done. Is her team? <laughs> the Everyone United States government. Everybody. She has a massive team of of agents. Who are highly I mean, trained. I mean, I guess. I guess I just associate her and her team yeah. with law enforcement in Star City. So I just figure that like, they're just a part of Dinah's crew. Yeah. I don't know. That's just my thought on it. But she's she's part of the federal government, I thought. Not the yeah. Star City's government. Yeah, she's federal. True. She's federal. True. So that's like some Amanda Waller team up type stuff. Her Waller and Watson. Got it. Orlando Williams says, I wanted to see Felicity team up with Laurel. That would have been interesting. Probably not, though. They probably... That would be weird. Um, I don't know. 
know. I, I don't know because I don't know what Laurel's... Well, I guess Laurel is out to get Diaz. Yes. But I feel like there's still... New hardcore. Yeah, but I feel like they're already cool. So it wouldn't be as big of a surprise. Yeah. Which is same with my Renee. Yeah, uh, it would theory. just be like a... But I do want to talk about Laurel because we did have that team up between her and the other Canary. Accidentally. If you will. You know? Ish. Because, it was so good, though. Yeah. It I was really fangirling was. for that double canary cry so hard. It was so good because I black siren. I know, but it <laughs> double black canary cry. Let me just live with that, okay? Did anybody catch? And I don't know if this was done intentionally mm. or if it was just quinky dink. But when they first showed Laurel, she was in all white. Yes, and I was like, mm? okay. Interesting choice of wardrobe. Very, yeah, white I think it, it is very white canary. I think it's very interesting how everyone just kind of forgot. Uh, I mean, I guess nobody really knew, but it's just so weird that she just like walks into Laurel's life and like it's kind of like she is the real Laurel again. And I, I don't know, I don't like it because it's it's not the real Laurel, and I can't get past that. But I feel like everybody else has gotten. But past I feel that. like no, I, I would like to defend another side of the show. Is I feel like they've done a good job giving her the more difficult path to walk because Laurel was a really underserved character in the past. And I always felt that Black Canary didn't have the strongest storylines. And mm-hmm. then they killed her. And then they brought her back. And I feel like this incarnation has been so much better yeah. to date. Mm-hmm. And there's more levels to Laurel. And it's kind of nice to see her become a better version of the mm-hmm. Laurel, even the Laurel that we used to have. The so Laurel that we used to have, that Black Canary, number one, That poor girl never even got a canary cry. Okay, what was that about? Yeah. And I love that Black Siren has a canary cry, but also I feel like the old Laurel was much more whiny. She was always whining about something, especially at Thea. So I'm really happy to see this Laurel kind of like stand her ground more and be more in her own, but have this like sensitivity that breaks through because... Yeah. Also, the actress is a great actress, and they're doing a good job using her talent. Finally, yeah. yeah Bravo. It, it is about time. The the and someone just mentioned in the comments. Um, but the the writers used to. I feel like they didn't give her the best kind of storylines, you know. And now they're like really stepping forward. Uh, the show didn't really give a crap about Laurel. Just look at the stuff they the writing they gave her. Um, it says chaos. Well. Also, too, I think that it's important that with any villain, because she is considered a former villain, the only way people will really hop on board and have empathy is if there is a human side that's Mm -hmm. revealed. So it's nice that she's not just constantly like, which, 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 I have an attitude, and I have this, and I have that, and they're trying to make me right. But we got to see moments when she was with Quentin, and now that Quentin is completely gone, it's like you don't know what you have until it's gone. So for her, and I like that they had the nice revealing moment this episode for her to say, I had somebody love me and yeah. care about me. And I think we forget, even though this Laurel, this version of her is from a different planet, she had her own trauma, which caused her to become this way. She's not like a robot that somebody invented and she came out the womb, for lack of better words, <laughs> as just an evil human. Like something happened to her. So Quentin was the only person to break through. And I thought it was really nice that she took the time to apologize to Dinah for being stubborn and saying, okay, humble pie, I ate some, I'm willing to go your direction now. I hope we see more double canary team-ups. Yeah. Man, I ship I'm them. excited. I yeah. ship the double canaries. Did we like the apology that she gave to Dinah? And I'm asking you guys as well. Yeah, um, I liked it. Yeah. I thought it was heartfelt. Great acting. Good job, girl. Hashtag I felt you. Dineral is a new hashtag for Ooh. them together. Dineral. They talk. Mm, that sounds like I feral like or yeah. something weird. Like, <laughs> sounds a, like a, a weird way to say diner. I don't know if I'm into let's, that Let's one. think of a better name for the two of them together. Because I feel like we can put a hashtag for them together. Yeah. I feel like Lorden. it's not over Lorden. between the two uh, of them. Uh. Uh, um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, we all were like, uh, uh, no. Okay. <laughs> also, no. Anyways. Um. I want to move on to the next topic, but I feel like you had something you wanted no, to no, say. No, no, I'm all good. Okay, we have to talk about the flash forward. Let's do it. First of all, and we'll talk about the actual depth of it, but really, I just want to say, Colton Haynes does not look that old. No. They're, like, it's supposed to be 20 years later, and like they gave him white on his whiskers, and everything else looks like a baby face, and then they have dirt on him. Yeah. I'm like, is the dirt supposed to cover the fact that he's like... <laughs> 
They it gave him like two wrinkles right here and then like one gray hair. I'm like, eh, maybe years? the man just ages well. Don't hate on his gr- skincare routine. <laughs> Dang. We and you have some good water. I know. I mean, maybe that you, I wouldn't be past that. I wouldn't go past that. Anyhow. The land of the mist, you never age. Right? So, yeah, cool. 20 years into the future, and he's he knows what this little connector, what is it called? I have it written down. Um, 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 um. Oh, the arrow had the thing? Yeah, the, the reconnecting stone or something or other. Really, um, what was the big thing for me with this one? Oh, irony in that, you know... First of all, this team in general, the writing team, they do a lot of different things, but they're always really good about diversity, whether it's be in front of the camera, mm-hmm. behind the camera, gender inclusion, just everything about mm-hmm. them is so good. And so in the past, they've had gay characters. I think it's really interesting choice that they made William yeah. a gay character. But and the- I love that it was such a throwaway line. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I was going to say the irony in that is the fact that Colton Haynes had earlier come out about being gay. Yeah. And that was like his whole big thing about why he had anxiety, why he had to quit the show in the first place. So it was just interesting. I mean, obviously he's not gay in the show because Roy was with Thea for yeah, so long, unless that's why Thea left him. Whoa. 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 No, I don't think so. <laughs> but, Theory's pretty but, upset. But it's just interesting that they paired the two and they yeah. made yeah. his opposing actor play the storyline of, oh, by the way, I'm gay. Yeah. I mean, I thought, I think Arrow has always been really inclusive, you know, with, with um, uh, Echo Cullum, you know, being, having a gay character or whatever. I, I thought, it, I think, and like you said, it was like, just like a throwaway line. It was like, they didn't make it a big deal, mm-hmm. you know, and you, I agree that it was interesting that they put him uh, against Roy. My question for the flash forward, though, is why did he burn that paper and what was on that note? Mm, good call. You know, what was on it? Why did he have to burn it? Why didn't he show William? Well, I wrote in my notes, I was like, they're doing so good feeding us little, like, breadcrumbs yeah. into the future. I love it. But now we know that they're going back to Star City. So I'm excited to see the state of Star City 20 years in the future. Well, no, he said he burned it so that William would not go back to Star City. Oh, I thought he said that we are no, going, back, we're to going back to Star City. Oh, I thought, yeah. I thought he said, what'd you do that for? So that we don't go, or you never go back to Star City. No, no, wow. no they're he, going to yeah. Star City. Okay. Boom. He's like, we're burning it. We're going That's to Star City. That's what happens when you won't watch with the subtitles for me. You know, wow. it's because I was looking down. And I was waiting up. to stick that in there wow. at any point. Yeah. <laughs> they, one wanted to watch subtitles. The other one didn't want to watch subtitles. I'm neutral. I'm like Switzerland. <laughs> uh-uh. Shut your face. <laughs> I feel like it's a spoiler. It's like right before Oliver goes to say, I love you, Felicity. It's like, I love you, Felicity. <laughs> That's true. I love you, Felicity. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> I wanted to hear him say it for the first time, not read it. Um. Anyway. Alley Cat Diva says, anyone else confused about why William... Um, um, why William thinks that Oliver and Felicity would abandon him because they would never do that. True. But look at his history. Like They kind of just abandoned him in this episode. I mean, they do keep shipping him off, yeah. so like he I lost, believe it. He lost his mom, you know, and that's even though it was taken by death, it still will give a child abandonment issues because you lost a parental figure. Also, can somebody get this poor kid a therapist? Because he said he's still having nightmares about that night, and he's, like, almost 30. Yeah, well, well you're never going to forget the night that your mom died. Right? That an ex- needs a, a whole therapy. island exploded while your mom was on it, yeah. and you saw it go up in flames? I'm just yeah, saying, give the kid more therapy. He, you shouldn't be having nightmares at, like, almost 30 about something that happened that long I mean, ago. You never know. Mm. I'm just trying to help. Anyway, um, yeah, that was that. Sorry, I interrupted your thought. I'm so That's sorry. Okay. That's okay. I, I, I can interrupt my own thoughts. I'm really good at that, so it's not a big deal. I feel like I've covered a lot. I don't want to delve like too, too much, and then we don't get a chance to get to Archer's Alley or News and Gossip. So is That's there true. anything else that we need to need to talk about that I missed? Longbow Hunters. <laughs> Duh. I answered my own question just real quick here. I was like, well, yeah, there's there's that. That's a thing. <laughs> those those three those three little suckers. So for those of you who are really really comic book heavy, big fans, talk to me about where their strength comes from. So the Longbow Hunters originally are from Seattle, and they are a super villain crew whose sole purpose really is to kill the Green Arrow. Yeah. Oh. Okay. They fun. were written into a comic, I believe, in 1987, which was so long ago. Um. Stop trying to rewrite. Um. <laughs> 
And that was like yesterday. <laughs> some of the people were in the chat were talking about who their favorite longbow hunter of this episode was. Um, I I think the silencer was my favorite. I think that was really cool that she could just like silence everybody and then nobody knew where, where she was or what she was doing or if there was even a fight happening. So I thought that was cool. Who which one was yours? Um I mean, I like all I'm I'm going to hold my verdict until we see more of their fighting. But for those of you tuning in who don't know about the longbow hunters and you're wondering who they are, they are led by Count Vertigo and then there's the Clock King Ponic uh Right? Clock King Ponic and then Red Dart and Killer Moth. I wrote them down in case I got them wrong because <laughs> there are always new iterations in different comics. But those are the ones that they're going with for this series. And I'm excited to see what they incorporate into them because Arrow is, I, I would say Arrow in within the Arrowverse is the closest to following the comic books. Uh, but they also like to meld timelines. Like they'll take something from the original comics and we'll see them meld it with the new 52 and with uh, Injustice Gods Among Us. So I'm excited to see what amalgamation of comic history they bring to the table and what new iteration they bring to the table. That's always exciting too because they do twist it up so it's not so like... you don't know. Exactly. So for somebody who is such a loyal, faithful fan, they mm -hmm. can't predict what's going to happen yeah. the next episode. But anyway, we do need to get to Archer's Alley. Uh, sure. I don't mean to cut you all off, but take no. it away. All right, you guys. So welcome to Archer's Alley. Ooh, good sound Ooh. effect. Pew, 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 pew. Once a week, I'm going to bring you an awesome green arrow fact. And please feel free to throw me your favorite facts all week long on Twitter or Instagram or even on YouTube. Leave it in the comments and I will consider it. So I actually brought some cool comic book pages for you guys from the episode that I'm talking about or the comic book that I'm talking about. And this is the one time that Black Siren, or I'm sorry, Black Canary and Green Arrow teamed up and Arrow actually injured Dr. Fate. So if you don't know about the comics, Dr. Fate is one of the most powerful in the DC universe and he is completely invulnerable. Yet, the Green Arrow, who has no powers, managed to injure him. And if you're watching, you can actually press pause and read the comic. I have all the pages here for you so you can scroll through them. Let's go to our next picture, please. No, oh, there you go. Yeah. Nice. And you can kind of see what was going on and what happened. And it is from the Injustice Gods Among Us series. So you can also pick up a copy and read it for yourself and see what the Green Arrow had been getting into. Cool. That's really cool. Which I think fighting with Dr. Fate is pretty uh, pretty ballsy because he's all powerful as long as he has that helmet on his head. And fun fact, he is the father of Zatanna Zatara, who is my absolute all-time favorite DC character. Nice. And she is the only DC character that can, on her own two feet, stand up to Superman because he is vulnerable to magic. Wow. Mm. More fun facts. Well, I guess also Dr. Fate, but he's too busy for Superman. Cool. But yeah, I like awesome. it. That's awesome. cool. Thanks. Well, now it is time for news and gossip. News and gossip. After Buzz TV news. It's not like brand new news. And it's not, though, gossipy, <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. So we all know that Colton Haynes loves to get down for Halloween. So I have some fun pictures of just, like, different <laughs> rando costumes. This, I think, was, um, this is actually Stephen Amell, if you are listening to the podcast, but he's dressed as... Nemo's what's Nemo's dad's name Merlin oh yeah Merlin and he, it says where's my son <laughs> anyways I thought that was funny really wait so cute. then did he dress his daughter up as Nemo I that would have been hilarious because I can't tell if that is photoshopped or not ah uh, I don't know anyways let's go to the next picture so this is actually Katie Cassie when she's getting fitted for her mask, for her Black Canary oh, mask. Wow. So it's a little bit of a throwback, but it fits in the realm of Halloween because tis the season. Tis the season. And she looks a little bit like Nightmare Before Christmas. But I was just thinking it looks like a Nightmare Before Christmas yeah. character. Yeah. Let's go to our next picture. So this is Colton Haynes. As I was saying, he loves to get down for Halloween. So, he always oh my gosh, he's so good every well, year. And he has the most ridiculous outfits, yeah. and now it all makes sense. He's always a woman on Halloween. Yeah. Some variation. <laughs> it all comes together. Anyway, <laughs> this is Marge Simpson, and big, huge boobs in all of his costumes. Anyways, let's go to the next one. Ooh, this is oh, actually that's so good. Yeah, and I don't think that's actually. I think that's uh, special effects for an actual project because you can see Taylor Lautner next to him. I don't think that was Halloween, but still fits into this category. 
do you think you can borrow it? Like, can you just call up the studio and be like, hey, I think I want to be like, I feel like it's like a version of the of the thing from the Fantastic Four. I don't know. Anyways, let's go to our next picture. Again, big boobs. He's Miss, Miss Piggy. Piggy. Oh my gosh. I'm like so ridiculous. He really goes for it every year. Seriously. Yeah. It must be his favorite ho uh, holiday. Anyway, next. And then this is him as Sailor Ursula. Moon! And yes. Ursula. And yeah, so I'm yes, so it. excited that's for okay. Emily as, that's, that is Emily Bat, isn't it? Yes, it yeah. is. Yeah. And there she is as Taylor Swift when Taylor Swift uh. did the uh, <laughs> NASA situation. I'm still going to stand by and say her Sailor Moon costume was like the best. Yeah. I want to yeah. go find those photos now. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, I Emily, I would have been your Sailor Mars. Oh, hey, look, it's Nemo. Aww. Not really. It's a little Asian baby, but we can see John Barrowman is obviously having a heyday with this. I don't know if this is a, like a Comic-Con or some sort of event. Yeah. And we'll see more of John Barrowman on our News of Gossip, just because I love him so much. And then this is my fun throwback. I think I've shown this before in past seasons, but I had to show it again. Oh, my gosh. Look at Stephen Amell, and he's got a garter around him. He's got to hate that picture. And we show it all the time. I know. With braces and the red face, and everything. Wow. Long hair. Bless his heart. I bet you his classmates did not think he was going to be the Green Arrow. I bet they didn't see that shower fight scene coming. Right? I was I was yeah. so appreciative. I'm still appreciative this week. Thank you. Yeah. You know, he's like, booyah in your face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now I have two different videos I want to show. And it's funny because I'm not sure which one's going to pull up first, but there was one where... Okay, John Berriman, I had read accident, like such an old article about how he fell and he ended up in the hospital. So I was like, let me find out more information. So I Googled John Berriman falls, and this is actually what came up. In the war of the sexes, what happens when we challenge men to try walking in <laughs> our shoes for a day? Mm, yes, uh oh, guess just getting involved. <laughs> I oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he shamelessly played that, that off. That is so good. Yeah. Anyway, also those four co-hosts look like they want to eat him alive. Yeah. So if you're listening on the podcast, please come over to the YouTube and watch yeah. this video. That was hilarious. That was yeah. really good. And he's usually so smooth in yeah. heels too, so that made it even funnier. This next one, let me just give a little prelude to it. So basically, this is at Comic-Con. A little girl apparently went, if you've seen this, sorry, but if a little girl went the year prior and she, um, Stephen Amell let her borrow, quote unquote, borrow his necklace. So she returned this year to Comic-Con and on the mic, she was like, I came to give you back your necklace. Aww. Aww. So this is what happened. I sure hope so. Hi there, what's your name? Hi, my name is Sarah. Oh, Sarah. Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Uh, this hi. is for Stephen Amell. I was here last year and you let me <laughs> oh You're gonna give it back? Okay. I'll take it back. But do you think that you're gonna come next year? Hopefully if you get tickets. <laughs> <laughs> It gets Sarah. better. Yeah, you'll get sick. Sarah, stay right there. I have something for you, okay? I'm gonna take back the necklace, but I've got something for you. I've only ever stolen one thing from the show. Okay, one second. All right. He's giving her his bow. Aww. If you're listening. And whispering a secret in her ear. Yeah. yeah. That was so sweet. Yeah. So that's my video. Um, Stormy Woods in the chat said that, that little girl is a cancer survivor. <gasps> so that just made it ten even times better. better. Thank you for that little fun fact, Stormy. Oh man, see, this is why actors make TV though, because it's great to be a fan when you're an adult, but this is really what gives children like their imagination and then they grow up and they go do amazing things and I'm yeah. getting all choked up because that was so, that was so sweet. sweet of Steven. 
Um, oh, I really am. Yeah, like sweet. being nice to kids always gets me. <laughs> Aw. Yeah, he's a, he's a good guy. Yeah. And he, he tries for his fans, which is sweet. Um, one more thing on news and gossip. We don't have any photos or anything, but everybody's talking about the Elseworld um, oh, yeah. photos that are everywhere. I just thought it was really funny to see Stephen Amell in the Flash costumes and um, Barry Allen in the, the Arrow costume, which he's filling out quite well. I thought he was going to be this little scrawny dude in it. And he's actually like, okay, he doesn't look half bad in the Arrow outfit. <laughs> but wait, Stephen Amell looks like he's going to yeah. bust out of that Flash outfit. <laughs> no, wait, outfit. did you guys yeah. see the original Flash? He's in one of the photos yeah. as well. He's like triple Stephen's size. He looks like, the, like his Flash outfit. The 19, what was it, what year? 1991 or something? Flash outfit yeah, or something? I was like, yeah, this, yeah, this yeah. is cool. Anyway, everyone's, everyone's talking about it. I'm sure everyone's seen it on social media it's all over the place but it's really cool i'm i'm really excited for this crossover so me too me too, me too. Me too. Yeah. and the supergirl and superman look so good i'm so excited to see a super team up in the works as yes. well yeah. like real you know i love you green arrow but you ain't got no superpowers i'm so excited to see all the superpowers <laughs> come together i'm like yes justice oh, friends yeah. like justice league super friends let's do it well i love steven mile i love the green arrow but let's talk about predictions oh <laughs> Oh, oh, I forgot about that. Like <laughs> we do it every time. I'm still surprised. So the only teaser they gave us is the fact that potentially, so, uh, you know, Oliver is now part of this gang, but when we got the coming up next week on Arrow, yeah. I couldn't tell if he was fighting against them or if he was fighting with them. But either way, they said that he's going to be in prison a lot longer than we think. However, I'm like, three episodes is good for me. It's like, enough. let's just get him out. I'm good. Yeah. I, that's not a prediction, but that's just how I feel. Go I ahead. agree. That was my last last episode. Get him out of that freaking prison. I'm over it. Um, my prediction, briefly, is that it's actually a flash-forward prediction. I'm going to say that uh, Roy and uh, William go back and Roy starts training William in some type of capacity. I think that the longbow hunters in our present time are going to be the catalyst for Oliver Queen being released from prison. Hmm. Interesting. 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 I like it. Cool. Well, awesome. Thank you guys. And thank you guys, everybody who participated in the chat. Thank you for co-hosting with us. Mm -hmm. If you are watching this at a later time and you couldn't join the chat, that's okay. You leave a comment right below because we love that as We're well, We're all too. up in it. But we just love hanging with you guys anyway. So be sure to follow all of us on social media to continue the conversation. Me, personally, I tend to be on Instagram a little bit more. So find me at yours truly, Ali Kona, with underscores in between. And follow these ladies as well. I'm Olivia D. Bortoli on Instagram and Twitter at Olivia D. Bortoli. I'm Carolina Benetti on Twitter and Lena Bean 113 on Instagram, which I tend to be on more, but I will answer you on both. All right, y'all. Until next week, we love you so much. Thank you, and we will see you then. Mwah! Goodbye, Bye, guys. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.